So I just finished No Limit Angere, Touch Me Not by Jose Rizal, and here's what I think. So this book is fiction, this book is satire, this book is a parody, or a political parody, and this book indirectly influenced a revolution. Now, this book is about the unfair treatment of the Spanish government um, during the Spanish colonization of the Philippines. So uh, this book really tackles a lot of issues, a lot of uh, the corruption and abuse of power by the Spanish friars during that time. Now, the author, Jose Rizal, was heavily influenced by European literature, and you could clearly see that here. Um, you could see his inspiration that he, the inspiration that he took from Les Miserables, from the Count of Monte Cristo. Now, the author, Jose Rizal, is a national hero of the Philippines. Now, he was executed on December 30, 1896 by the Spanish government for treason. Now, this book was originally written in Spanish, but I got the Penguin's Classics version translated by Harold Augenbaum. And I could honestly say this is a fantastic edition. The introduction was filled with information, every, pretty much everything you need to understand the political climate of the Philippines at that time and really the motivations and ideals of the author. Fun fact, this is actually required reading for high school students in the Philippines as well. This book has a lot of history involved and to understand and appreciate it to its fullest extent, you might need to know like bits and pieces of information about the political climate of the Philippines during the Spanish colonization. Now you could look that up on Wikipedia, but I highly suggest that you read the introduction. You get a little uh, information about the author and then you also like get a lot of information about the Spanish government during that time and the Philippines. Now, this book has a decent story. In my opinion, it was pretty mediocre. I mean, the prose was excellent, it was beautiful, but at times like the message that it was trying to send can be too in your face, at least for my taste, because there was absolutely no subtlety here. Now, the purpose of this novel wasn't subtlety, it wasn't metaphors. It was basically to serve as a wake up call for his countrymen. I mean, this indirectly influenced a revolution. So yeah, I get it. But judging it as a novel, judging it as a story, this can be a bit melodramatic. This reads like a soap opera, really. The characters are all one dimensional. The, the antagonists constantly monologue about their evil plans. And well, I understand why he wrote it this way because it was what was needed at the time. Now, reading this, I felt his anger, his frustrations towards the unfair treatment of his people, but also anger towards the people for being so blinded by this abuse. It's like he was going like, hey, look, look, look here. This is what they're doing to us. So this is arguably one of the most important novels in Philippines history. It is also one of the sassiest novels out there. Each page is riddled with sarcasm and mockery, like every moment is spent throwing shade at the colonial government and the Spanish friars' corruption and abuse of power. This book was funny as hell. Again, it was a little too um, in your face to be considered witty, but oh, by the way, this, this is a duology. Can you imagine? the audacity of this author, because he already got into a lot of trouble for writing this book. And he was like, you know what would be a great idea? Let me fucking write a sequel. Dog, that's just badass. So this book kind of feels like an essay inside a story. There's a lot of philosophical views about life, about religion, about education. Now the author's personal views were blatantly obvious in these pages and he basically holds your hand and leads you the entire way through just showing you everything just for I can show you the world like dog let me figure shit out on my own again personal taste and it wasn't what was needed at the time he unapologetically makes use of his characters either through their actions through their dialogue or really a long monologue to send his message. Now, this was extremely brave at the time and what the country needed and what he had the ability to provide. So there was no chance for us to side with the friars in this book. There was no chance for us to consult our own thoughts and make our own decisions, uh, judge the morality of the things that they're doing um, because 
in this book, everything is clergy bad, main character is good. Again, authorial intent, I don't think he could have risked painting the clergy as anything other than abusive because at that time his people were really blinded by that side of, of the friars because they were using like religion as like, hey, everything we do is good because God said so. And so the thing is like, he was basically highlighting all the messed up shit that the Spanish friars sort of get away with. So again, this book is extremely biased, but I, I understand why. The author spoke a lot of good things about the mother country, which was Spain at that time. In my opinion, reading this book, I got the feeling that he was more pushing or uh, speaking against the unfair treatment and the abuse of power by the Spanish friars, how they use religion as a means to control the public, essentially allowing them to do whatever the fuck they want with little to no consequences. And I never got the idea that he was pushing for like the full emancipation of the country, more like a change in management, really. But these pages are filled with anger, with frustration, but also hope. Hope for a better future, hope for change. Jose de Sal was a brilliant writer, and I appreciate this novel mainly for its part in history, but also how badass it was to write this during that time. Now, this is a solid piece of classic literature, Filipino classic. So if you're looking for to read more international classics, I highly recommend this one. Without reading the introduction or without knowing the author's intent and the political climate of the Philippines at that time, this book is just a novel, melodramatic, derivative, with one-dimensional characters, at times idiotic characters. But once you know the history of this book, the purpose and the intent of this book, this book can be funny. This book can be philosophical. This book can inspire you to hope for change. And this is a classic for a reason. I think this is a commentary on society that is still relevant today. And just to give you an idea of the prose in this book, you loved your country because your father taught you to do so. You loved it because you had love there, fortune, youth, because everything smiled down on you, because your country never did you any injustices. You loved it because we love anything that makes us happy. But on the day you find yourself poor, hungry, persecuted, denounced, and sold out by your own countrymen. On that day, you will renounce yourself, your country, everything. Dog. So yeah, that's the kind of writing in this book. And anyways, I'll see you soon. Peace.